What is happening, party people? What do you say we European a bison today? This is a wild bison. You can tell when he bit the bullet, he was sticking his tongue out at the shooter. It's not very nice. But uh, I'll show you the start to finish on a bison. I'm gonna skin this one just a little bit different because this gentleman is actually gonna save this tuft of hair uh, for his wife to make a pillow or something along that line. So, like any animal, we're gonna start by peeling him down. Same old rules apply here. Just get as much tissue and meat as you can get off. It just saves you time in the boil. I say it all the time, and I will forever say it. Whatever you take off with a knife just shortens your time in the pot. Okay, I'll next step, get you a pot big enough to support a bison. Now this is a smaller female, so you may need something bigger than this. And my first goal is to get the horns off. Your pot will grow when those horns come off, if you know what I mean. So this is like a $22 just galvanized bucket from Home Depot, Lowe's, your hardware store. You probably find it at any ace or true value all throughout the country. So I would take your bison and put them in, in this case her in, horns down and then just get the horns covered. No oxyclean, no chemicals on those horns. We're going to get this hot as fast as we can and get these horns off as fast as we can to reduce any type of shrink. Don't spray your electrical like I did. Okay, I put that bison in there, water just above the horns, and it's been in there simmering, or almost to a simmer, for 20 minutes, and it's time for me to take it out. Now, I use a big plastic mallet, a rubber mallet, or something, because you're trying to jar that horn loose of its bone. So what I do is only hit where there's bone behind the horn. If you hit way up on the tip, you could damage it. You just need a couple of good whaps and then it'll come free. Then from there, you just give everything a real good rinsing and then let those horns dry. Because I boiled them so fast and got them off quickly, I get very minimal shrink. I'll also take that bison and I'll cut those horn butts out, that, uh, that internal skull bone that supports that uh, horn. I'll take and cut those way down. Because there is going to be some shrink, they're very difficult to have come all the way back on. Plus, it shortens that skull and lets you put it in your pot. I had to weight down that bison because it wanted to float in the pot. I put a handful of OxyClean in there as my degreaser. Use whatever you'd like and then give it a good long boil. The bigger and older the skull, the more abuse it will take. That's key. If this was a really young, say, calf bison, it would take a quarter of the time to boil before I started damaging bone. So when it's out of there, you can't use enough power. I like to use the sharpest nozzle, the heaviest power washer I got, and just squirt, squirt, squirt. Um, for me, the top of the head is the most difficult thing on a bison. So don't be alarmed if you think the whole thing's gonna reflect the top. On any other animal, normally the top of the head is the easiest. So I get on hands and knees, pull parts. Sometimes it's easier actually to cut and remove pieces than it is to actually spray it. You know the drill, whatever it takes. So from transferring from one pot to the other, I got a little spot of rust on the nose where it hit the bottom of that other pot. So I just take my knife and scrape that free. I want to encourage you, don't be scared to remove anything. It's just bone. Once I put it in my whitening mix, which is 50% peroxide, 50% water. I bring it to a full boil and then turn it down to a simmer. That's key. And you can leave it in there as long as it takes to disintegrate the last little bits of tissue you couldn't get off with the power washer.
I get so many questions about how long do I do this skull or how long do I do that skull. Use your judgment. I'll give you a few rules of thumb. If your skull is becoming flexible or the nose pieces are starting to loosen, you've had plenty of time in the boil. But if the skull is super rigid and you've still got tissue in certain places, let that bad boy boil until everything comes off. In my book, clean is number one, white is number two, and it should be for everybody. Okay, at this point, it's all about dry time. Make sure everything is out. Take a look. Now is the time to get everything off. You want to be able to, uh, or you want to blow in these holes here and the holes in the eye sockets. There's a nerve or a vein or something runs in there and you'll actually shoot it right out. Okay, skull's drying. You got your horns dry. Make sure your horns are dry first. And then I give everything a coat of mop and glow in and out of that horn. It'll just seal it. It'll make it look nice. And it will not create sheen unless you put multiple layers on it. I uh, got this thing drying. It's pretty dry. It's been sitting in front of the fan for a while. I never like to dry with heat. If you ever... Um, Got to dry a skull in a hurry. I don't like using heat. I've had it to where I've used something warm, like a little heater, and it pulls oil out. Don't know why, but it does. Um, the one thing you want to be careful with when you have bison skulls, or I just did a, uh, a tar or a chamois, you can actually put those on the wrong side and you won't know the difference. So they should fit real natural. And because I cut these down considerably, I'm actually going to screw this piece back on to give me a little more support through the horn. It would work fine without it. I just like it being in there. It just made the process of cleaning this skull a ton easier. So I'm just going to run a few screws in there and then we'll bond them on. Project Bison is done. And for a hanger, because bison normally go flat on the wall, I just take a little toothy hanger like that put it on there so your finished product sits on the wall just like that thanks for watching